for a 50 millimeter shaft, the geometrical center of the pad is typically preloaded by 80 micrometers. To understand the concept of preload, you need to know how unpreloaded pad looks like. Unpreloaded pad looks like this, with nominal clearance of 120 micrometers, all the way through the whole pad surface. When the pad is preloaded, which means the center of the pad is offset by a certain amount from the center of the shaft. This renders the minimum bearing gap of 40 micrometers. While the leading edge of the pad has close to 120 micrometer clearance. This preloaded condition makes the wedge effect effective. Pad number 2 is also preloaded by 80 micrometers and pad number three as well. Again, this preloaded pad geometry make wedge effect more effective. If you have different size of shaft, small or large, the preloaded amount need to be adjusted accordingly. It is also important to note that the typical offset is 0.7, which is defined by the length to the minimum gap over the total length of the pad. It is also important to understand that the bearing clearance dictates the impeller tip clearance. Here is a better description. Here is a shaft, and impellers are attached to the shaft. And the bearing supports the shaft and impeller assembly. The impeller clearance is typically larger than the bearing clearance, so that the shaft can move freely without the impeller hitting on the housing or seal. Let's zoom in to this area. The axial clearance is typically defined by shaft thermal growth and tolerance stack. The radial clearance accounts for bearing clearance and the bump foil height. So as you can imagine, the large bearing clearance leads to lower bearing efficiency. The disadvantage of gas foil bearing is that they have small damping. Typically, the damping coefficient decreases with increasing excitation frequency. Damping is needed especially when the machine crosses the critical speed. Because the high damping can suppress the rotor motion when crossing the critical speed. So, if the damping is small, do not continuously operate the machine near the bending critical speed. Also, make sure to balance the machine well to G2.5 level of balance. Gas full bearing also has low load carrying capacity. So, keeping the unit load under 5 psi is recommended. To understand the unit loading, you need to understand the bearing area, which is defined by its length times the diameter. Now, divide the weight of the rotor and impeller by bearing area, which gives the unit load. Here is a better description of the load carrying capacity. Weight of the rotor and impellers divided by the bearing areas, which gives the unit load and it is recommended to be less than 5 psi, but this is recommendation only. For gas foil bearing, the bearing cooling is critical for high reliability. I'll cover this topic in a separate video later on. Alright, this is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.